All right, this video is kind of a part two, but also kind of a separate video to my proof that John Stockton is the most overrated player in NBA history video. It is a part two, however, it's also kind of separate because it's tackling a broader concept that also heavily applies to John Stockton. I find him as the best example to prove the point of this video. So if you have not watched my last video on John Stockton, please do so because a good portion of this video is not going to make sense without the context from that. That one. So if you have not watched the Stockton video, please go do that and then come back to this one. Also, if you enjoy this video, subscribe because there are more videos like it already on the channel with many more to come in the future. Also, drop a like on this video. It does a whole lot to help me on this channel and I'm very much appreciate it. Now this video, like the Stockton one, is on a topic I have wanted to talk about for a very long time but never really got around to, and that is the truth about true point guards. Basically why the idea of true point guards is a flawed concept and they do not contribute to winning in the way that people think they do. And that if you have a guy on your roster averaging double digit assists on your team, it points to an inherent flaw with your team. So let's talk about why true point guards are basically bullshit. Easily the most damning thing that you can point to when talking about true point guards is the lack of success that they have seen as a collective. Who are the greatest true point guards? Steve Nash, Chris Paul, John Stockton, Jason Kidd, Magic Johnson, who is an outlier, who we're going to be talking about later. He's separate from this. But looking at the four guys I mentioned, CP3, Nash, Stockton, and the wife beater, only one of them have won a championship, and that was with him well out of his prime and not being heavily relied on to the extent that he was in his prime, but everyone else, even despite having many shots at it, have not won a ring. There are only two MVP awards amongst these four as well, at least one of them being questionable, arguably both of them. There are also, of course, multiple All-NBA selections and a couple of All-Defensive teams, which is pretty separate from this, and of course, some assist leaders. But the accomplishment that matters the most has managed to escape all of these players in their prime. Crimes. The reason for that is because what they represent, the very concept of a true point guard, is flawed. Like I said, if you have a true point guard on your roster, and specifically you are heavily relying upon them for your team to win, you have a problem on your hands and you should be worried. Because it more than likely means that your team is not going to win a championship. And I say that based off of pretty much all of the evidence. In the last 30 years, not a single championship team has won that championship with a player on their roster who averaged double digit assists in the regular season. Not a one. And prior to Magic Johnson and the Showtime Lakers, there was not a case of that either. Now, correlation does not always equal causation. However, when there's that much of a sample size and that much of a precedent, I think you can draw some conclusions. And the reason for that is simple. If you have a guy on your team that is responsible for making all of the plays, for setting up all scores, your offense becomes predictable. Now, there are ways around this. For example, the 2008 Celtics, where Jean Rondo is considered a true point guard. And of course, that team won a championship. Rondo just did not average double digit assists. Which is true, however, that's the case because the Celtics did not rely on him that much. It's why he did not average 10 assists per game. He only averaged five assists in the regular season and six and a half in the playoffs. Paul Pierce could create his own shots. Kevin Garnett was really good in the post and in the mid range. Pierce was averaging four and a half assists in the regular season and the playoffs. This was far from double digit assist Rajon Rondo. Coincidentally, when the Celtics were a bit older and relied on Rondo to set up their offense more, he averaged just short of 10 assists per game in the regular season. When they met the Lakers in the finals again, they lost this time. On top of the offense overall for the team becoming predictable, it makes the tendencies of that true point guard predictable as well. When you are very clearly looking to make a pass on every possession, the defense knows you aren't nearly as big of a threat as you 
you would be if you didn't make it as clear that you were looking to make a pass every time. This is something Rondo himself has always struggled with. I can tell you this when watching the Bulls, the defense just was not really worrying too much about Rondo with the ball in his hands, rather worrying about where the pass would be going. Steve Nash had this problem, Kidd had this problem, Stockton definitely did. CP3 is probably the best true point guard and the only guy that I'd say this does not apply to simply because he was a pretty aggressive scorer on top of his true point guardness. He averaged 19 points plus six times in his career on very good efficiency, and just in general, while he is clearly looking for passes, he's also shown not only an ability but a preference to pull up from mid-range out of the pick and roll, which is where he gets a lot of his assists. Steve Nash could have avoided these problems if he was more aggressive. Being that level of a passer while also being a very aggressive and capable scorer is a deadly combination on offense. I think LeBron is the perfect example of this. Up until this year, LeBron has never averaged double-digit assists despite very much having the capability of doing it. Could you imagine LeBron taking his talents and deciding, you know what, I'm going to be a true point guard, just six foot eight and ridiculously athletic, and then instead of averaging 27 and seven, he decides to average 19 and 13? That is essentially what a lot of true point guards do. That comparison is not perfect because one, every player besides for Michael Jordan, in my opinion, is not on the same level as LeBron James. No player is LeBron except for LeBron, broadly speaking. And two, not all of these true point guards that I have focused in on had that ability to score. For guys like Rajon Rondo and Jason Kidd, they didn't opt to pass instead of score, they opted to pass instead of brick, because neither one of them had that kind of scoring ability. Kidd shot 40% for his career, Rondo not a scorer in case you've ever watched him ever. So for those guys, I don't find them to be nearly as valuable as guys like Steve Nash and Chris Paul and even John Stockton, who at least had that capability to shoot and CP3 actually going for it more, but I don't find players like Rondo and Jason Kidd to be nearly as valuable as they're given credit for just because they're good passers. Really, there are two paths for those guys being truly successful rather than just racking up assists. And that is either becoming a good scorer or just having a reduced role. Rondo won his only championship when he had a smaller role earlier in his career, and Kidd did it later with the Mavericks. These players just simply cannot be the best players on championship teams, or really even a huge foundation of it, specifically in John Stockton's case. I think a great example of a player similar to, let's say, Jason Kidd being reduced to just a role player, I personally I personally feel reducing their role is for the betterment of the team that has that player. I'd even go as far to question the legitimacy of a player who is really just a playmaker and defender being a star player. I honestly feel, at least in the broadest sense possible, that Jason Kidd was just a roided up Ricky Rubio in a role that was way higher than he really should have been in. Which is still a damn good player, but just not someone that I would ever want my team trying to build a championship core around. So great playmakers clearly do have a place, however they can not only be playmakers, they need to be more dynamic than that. In my opinion, they also need to have that kind of scoring capability in order to be a star player in my view. That's the thing about Stockton in particular. I feel he gets overrated because of his all-time assist ranking and how many assists he averaged at one point, but I really think he would have been a better player if he wasn't getting this many assists. If John had opted to be more of a scorer rather than a passer, I think the Jazz would have one, seen more success, and two, John would be lower in all-time rankings because people have this flawed view of assists. This is a guy who averaged 17 points in the NBA on 54% shooting as a six foot one skinny as hell point guard in a physical big man dominated era. If he had emphasized his scoring and averaged let's say 23 and 8 instead of 14 and 14 throughout his prime, I bet you the Jazz would have seen more success, but sadly I also bet you John Stockton would not be nearly as high ranking as people put him because they just have this mindset of the true point guard in their head. I think the Jazz potentially could have won a championship with Stockton playing like this if they also had added some other playmakers to the roster to make up for the slack there, because that was the flaw with the Utah Jazz. They needed John Stockton to make all the plays. 
the one-man show for playmaking is really the main reason I think the Jazz saw no success, and the reason why they ended up making it into the finals when they had another playmaker in Jeff Hornacek. I actually went into the numbers to see what the Jazz record looked like when Stockton put up over 20 points on over 50% shooting, and... It wasn't that great, although I did find that John Stockton has an insane amount of games in his career with 20 points on 70 plus percent shooting, because because of his lack of aggressiveness, the only time he really scored 20 was when he was just making all of his shots, not taking more. There was a correlation earlier in Stockton's career for the Jazz winning more games, but it went the opposite in later years, but I really think that was just because of one, the lack of playmaking outside of Stockton on the Jazz, and there were also many games where Stockton was scoring 20 because he had to make up for the slack of Carl Malone having a bad game. But the theory that his team would be better if he had shot the ball more is something that Steve Nash, I think who is a very similar player to Stockton, has actually talked about himself. He said in an interview after he retired that he thinks that the Suns would have been more successful if he had just shot the ball more rather than being that playmaker. Because ironically, Nash had a very similar role to John Stockton in Phoenix when he played with Amari Stoudemire, except in this case, Nash was a, both a far superior player to Stoudemire, and in my opinion, a more superior player to Stockton because of his jump shot. And also, Amari benefited quite a bit more from Nash than Malone did from Stockton because Malone was just a way better offensive player than Stoudemire. But I think both of those situations are a case where if both of those point guards had just shot the ball more, the teams would have seen more success. These crazy assist numbers that Stockton put up in his career and other players have just don't lead to winning. I think a great piece of evidence for this is the Jazz finally making their way to the finals in 97 and 98 when Stockton was no longer leading the league in assists. He averaged 10 and 97 and 8 and 98 when they had their best shot at a championship. Now, if the Jazz had made this adjustment and had someone like Jeff Hornacek on the roster who was capable of averaging five assists as well as a good backup point guard, and Stockton had shot the ball more when he was younger and more capable than he was when he was older in the 98 and 97 series, is if that had happened, I bet you the Jazz could have won a championship, even with the Jordan Bulls of the 90s. But now let's talk about Magic Johnson, who I'm sure many of you have been screaming at me to get to, because yeah, he kind of kills all of this. However, he is an outlier. Throughout his prime, just excluding the last 32 games of his career when he tried to make a comeback, he averaged 20 points on 52% shooting. He also played with one of the 10 greatest players of all time and was 6 foot 9. A true point guard, as people seem to define it, is usually a normal point guard size around 6 foot. Really, Kid is the only one that I would consider a true point guard that is over 6 foot 3. Now, you could say that's me cherry picking around Magic Johnson because he disproves my point, which. That's a fair argument. However, if it takes being a top probably five player of all time to actually succeed as a true point guard, then I think that says enough as is. And also, I don't think it's impossible to average double digit assists and win a championship. This year, LeBron is averaging double digit assists on the Lakers, who I believe have a very real shot at the championship. I'm not going to say that that automatically disqualifies this team from having any shot at a championship, because at a certain point, you can be so fucking good that it does not matter that you have this issue within your team, and especially if you can also be a dynamic scorer like LeBron James is on top of it, and Magic Johnson was on top of it. But Stockton, CP3, Nash, Jason Kidd, Rajon Rondo, none of those guys were even close to the same level as LeBron James and Magic Johnson. I think we very well could see the first player outside of Magic Johnson win a championship while averaging double-digit assists in the regular season, However, that player is going to be LeBron fucking James. But again, that's a player whose game goes far past just their playmaking ability. But for a player whose game begins and really ends at the assist, like John Stockton, it's not going to win you a championship.
It's important for teams to have dynamic offenses with multiple playmakers. What matters far more than individual player assist numbers is team assist numbers. Last year, the Raptors were 12th in team assists per game. The Warriors in 2018 and 2017 were number one. The Cavs in 2016 were 13th. 2015, the Warriors were first. The Spurs were first in 2014. And that's not because they had a true point guard on their team. It's because they had a group of players who as a collective unit could playmake. That opened up their offense immensely cutting out a lot of the potential weaknesses. With Stockton on the Jazz, there would be so many plays where he runs a pick and roll, he passes it out to the perimeter, and there's not a shot there. So they have to get a couple seconds off of the clock, getting the ball back to Stockton so he can make a play happen. They were over-reliant on him creating the offense. Let's say the Jazz instead both used Stockton as more of a scorer and also had a couple other guys on the perimeter who could make plays when they got the ball in their hand, I guarantee you the Jazz would have been a lot better. That's why in the late 90s, they went to a system where instead they had Jeff Hornacek as a secondary playmaker, so that problem would not occur as often. It still happened because it wasn't as dynamic as it needed to be, but it was an improvement. But that is why true point guards and the very concept of them is flawed and they are overrated. I hope we can now stop using this dumbass argument against scoring guards like Steph Curry and Damian Lillard. I have heard I'd take Chris Paul over Stephen Curry because Paul is a true point guard so many times and it's getting very old. It's a flawed concept that should not be viewed as ideal if your offense is created around a true point guard it's a flawed offense also this is why i believe john stockton is the most overrated player ever because he represents true point guards in its purest form also he had no left that's the end of this video please be sure to like and subscribe for more nba content like this and cue the after music